Hi everyone, I'm Smitha from Assembly AI and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the brand new Assistance API by OpenAI. They released it during their dev day and it's still in beta mode. But in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can build your very own AI assistant in Python using the brand new Assistance API. I'm going to be writing all of the code in a notebook file right here. And before we begin, you do need to install OpenAI's library. So you can do that by typing in pip install upgrade OpenAI to upgrade it to the latest version, or you can also do pip install OpenAI as well. Additionally, you also need an OpenAI API key, which you can easily create on their website. Once we've done that, we can start writing code. So let's start off by importing OpenAI's library. And then we want to create a client object. And inside of this client object, we want to paste our API key. Once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and start creating the assistant. So what exactly is the OpenAI assistant? So assistants can actually call OpenAI's models with very specific instructions on how to tune their personalities and capabilities. So by creating an assistant, you can also make use of all the models that OpenAI has, and you can also create a very specific set of instructions on how you want your assistant to act like. In addition to that, assistants can also access multiple tools in parallel. These can be both OpenAI hosted tools, for example, like Code Interpreter and Knowledge Retrieval. We're actually going to be making use of one of this in this video, and also tools that you build yourself via function calling. So if you have your own application and you want to connect it to this assistant, you can do that with function calling as well. So this is a very neat way to build assistance on top of OpenAI's library. So step one, creating the assistant. So let's create an assistant object. And in the assistance object, we have to give it a name. So we're going to start off by giving it the name of a math tutor. And we also have to give it some instructions. So for the instructions, we can say, you are a personal math tutor. Write and run code to answer math questions. The next parameter that we have to include are tools. So tools refers to things like code interpreter or file retrieval. So in this case, we want to make use of the code interpreter tool. So that's what we're going to be writing. And once we're done with tools, we want to write the type of model that we want this assistant to be based off. So for model, we can use GPT-4. And I'm using a very specific model of GPT-4. I'm using GPT-4 11.06 preview. Once this is done, we can run the cells. Now, once you've created an assistant, you want to actually create a thread. So I'll explain what a thread is. So this is how an assistant object actually looks like. Inside of an assistant, there can be multiple threads running. Inside of threads, we have multiple messages between the user and the assistant. So we actually have to create messages, put them into threads, and then link these threads to the assistant object. I'll get more into that as we code, so it makes a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and create our very first thread. So this line of code right here creates our thread, and then we're also going to print it so we can find out more details, for example, the thread ID and more. Once our thread has been created, we're going to want to add a message to our thread. So let's do message equals to client.beta. It 
In this request to create a message, we have to give three different parameters, which is the thread ID that we want to link this message to. As I was saying before, we have to first create a thread and then create messages to put into threads. So we have to provide a thread ID. We also have to provide the role of the user and we have to provide the content of the message. So let's start off by providing the thread ID. Since we've already created a thread object, we can just call that and do dot ID. And then next, let's create a role. So for role, I'm just going to write user. After which, let's actually create our content. Solve this problem. 3x plus 11 equals to 14. And we can hit run. If you're curious on what exactly the message looks like, we can actually print the message as well. Next up, we want to run the assistant. So let's do run equals to client dot beta dot threads dot runs dot create. And to run this, we have to give two parameters, the first being the thread ID and the second being the assistant ID that we initially created. So thread ID equals to thread dot ID and assistant ID is equals to assistant dot ID and hit run. Once it has run, we can actually go ahead and display the assistant's response to the questions that we asked. To display the assistant's response, we need to retrieve the messages from the thread. So we want to do run equals to client So we want to do run equals to client dot beta dot threads dot runs dot retrieve. And we want to pass in the thread ID as well as the run ID. Once we've retrieved the run, we now want to actually retrieve all the messages which are inside of this run. So let's do messages equals to dot messages dot list. And we just have to provide the thread ID for this. Finally, let's print out all of the messages that we have sent so far between us and the assistant. So we want to do for message in reversed messages. The reason why we're doing reversed is because we want to get the most oldest message that we sent first, printed out first, and then the most latest message from the assistant. So for message in reversed messages, we want to do print message dot roll. And then we want to do message dot content dot text dot value. And let's hit run. So there's a slight mistake here. We want to make this into messages dot data. And then let's hit run. So we have all the messages that we have sent so far. First off, we asked a question on solve this problem. 3x plus 11 equals to 14. And the AI assistant replied with the solution to the equation 3x plus 11 equals to 14 is x equals to 1. So this is a very basic example on how we can create our very own AI assistant. The next example that we're going to look at is actually creating AI assistants with files. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be passing a research paper which recently came out on MemGPT and we're going to ask this AI assistant to answer questions based on this research paper.
In this next part, I'm going to show you exactly how we can create an AI assistant, which is linked to files. So we're going to be making use of something called knowledge retrieval. The first thing that we have to do before creating an assistant is uploading our file to OpenAI. So we can go ahead and do that by doing file equals to client. dot files dot create. The first thing that we want to do here is give the file name and the purpose of this file. So let's do file equals to open. And I have the file right here. So let me copy its relative path and paste it. And then we want to say our purpose is for assistance and hit run. We can also print out this file. So we get the file ID of this, which is going to be useful later on when we create an assistant. So next we're going to be creating the assistant code for creating the assistant is very similar to the code that we used previously. So I'm just going to copy this, but make a couple of changes. So first off, the name is going to be something different. So we can call this machine learning researcher. And for the instructions, instead of saying this, we're going to say you are a machine learning researcher. answer questions on the research paper. For tools, instead of code interpreter, we want to change this to retrieval. We'll keep the model the same, but here is a difference where we now have to pass our file IDs. So let's just copy this file ID that we just created and paste it here and hit run. And that should create our assistant. Next, we want to create a thread. And this is going to be the exact same way that we've done it before. Let's hit run. And then we want to create a message. Again, I'm just going to copy this and make some changes. All I'm going to do is change the content of this and I'm going to say How does MemGBT allow LLMs to have unlimited context length? And we're going to hit run. Next, we're going to actually run the assistant. So just copy this and paste it here, hit run. After we've done that, we want to display all of the assistance response to the question we just asked. So just copy this again, hit run to retrieve the runs that we just created. And next we want to retrieve all of the messages. So I'm pasting this right here to retrieve the messages and also to print out each individual message. And this right here is the answer from the assistant that we just created. So it was able to read the paper that we passed it and it was able to answer a question. There's also a lot more that you can build on top of this. You can continue your conversation. You can continue asking more questions. All you have to do is simply just change the question right here and run this cell again and then run all of these following cells to get your answer. Also on top of this, you can link other tools that you know or that you plan on using via function calling. 
This is still in beta mode, so there's definitely a lot of work to be done. The documentation of this is also not that great, but hopefully as time goes on, they work on that as well. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more resources put out. If you like this video, check out this next video right here on MemGPT. MemGPT is the latest large language framework which allows LLMs to have unlimited context length.